This week on Archer's Choice. And I gotta tell you something, I don't know if that'll ever happen again, but to, for us to do that as a family, the way I'll put it, you put the Cianciarillos and the Denny's together, yep, carnage. Things are gonna die. Ah, that sagebrush. Ugh. I oh. thought you had a bat in the cave. No, I didn't have a oh. bat in the cave. Hey, welcome to this week's hey. Archer's Choice. This week we're headed back to Wyoming with yes. the Mountain Outfit. Yes. Scott and Angie Keaton and, and RJ and everyone else that's in camp. I, we're just having a blast, and that's what, that's what it's all supposed to be. I yes. mean, we're just having fun. Great way to start out the you know the early season fall, yes. and and I'm telling you, if you have allergies and you get that sagebrush, huh? Woo! I'm pretty sure he just has a bat in the cave. <laughs> Let's just get hunting, shall we? I don't want to look. Oh, no, don't show that up the camera. Oh, sorry about that. My apologies. Maybe it's time for... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> the crew is still enjoying their second day hunting with Table Mountain Outfitters. The action continues as Vicki and Ralph set their sights on some of the western pronghorns of Wyoming. They are itching to get in those blinds. But first, let's check back in with RJ and the buck he just took with his Hoyt. And next thing you know, Eddie looks out the side and he's like, RJ, RJ, there's an antelope right here. And sure enough, there's four bucks coming right in and it's not even probably 6.45 the time that we see them. And by 6.53, I have a buck down. I knew that water hole was pretty pretty hot this year, lots of big bucks in there. So I figured he would actually have been fit, done the first day, but it doesn't always happen that way. Here's the deal. Now he and Eddie have to split up and they have to film us too. <laughs> Good job, guys. Maybe. 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 No. They'll be splitting up. Absolutely. But Congratulations. How, cool, how cool is that? You know, that we we're so blessed to share this as a family. Have this fun. And these memories that'll last a lifetime. Yeah, so congratulations again, Attaboy, RJ. Buddy. You got rid of the antelope blind jinx. Good job. Way to go. In the meantime. We'll just sit here and look at the vast open of space. Yes. We got it. Right there. And David Snap, look at that. Beautiful. That four millimeter axis is great. Right when you walk into my kill zone. So after I shoot, we go out, we take a few pictures. I mean, we see it die at 40 yards from the blind. All of a sudden, Keaton and Scott and Angie, and they all get there. And there's a few other guys from camp that came as well. And we drag it over, we take a few more pictures. We do everything we need to. We gut it out there in the field, throw it in the bed of the truck, and we come back and clean it. But I want to give a big thank you to Scott and Angie and Table Mountain Outfitters for letting all this happen. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully you guys will have me, you'll have me back. But either way, thank you guys very much for this beautiful animal. There's a lot that needs to be done to get this pronghorn ready for transport to fill up one of the many freezers RJ and the family have back at the homestead. The field dressing starts out here in the field before moving back to the processing shed. Pretty cool to be able to pull up and just see it dead right there by the water hole. So we get back to camp 
and we grab our cold steel knives and we start cutting. We cord it up, we take the hide off, we get the head off, and we put it in some bags, freeze it until we're good to go. Of course. Oh, sure, I'll have you out again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't break up the two women. Oh, no. Never. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Second day, we're up and at it again. I'm still up. They're moving us, Ralph and I, to a different blind just to see what we can see. Keenan told us, he said, listen, he goes, watch behind you. He said, these antelope in this pasture, they're gonna come up behind you. They're gonna circle around a couple times before they finally come in to drink. Well, antelope, they're uh, definitely a different animal than anybody ever could hunt. You know, they're pretty spooky, but uh, they, don't, they spook themselves more than anybody will spook them, really. Like, I've seen them jump from their shadow before. It's, it's got its challenges. I'd say probably the biggest is being patient. You know, if you're not patient and let them come in and drink, you're gonna miss your, mess up your shot or, you know, they're gonna jump out of the way without you even drawing. It's, it's definitely a challenge, but you gotta, the only thing you gotta really worry about with them is beating their eyes because uh, they don't really use their nose a lot. Antelope, they could, uh, they'll actually see you from better from further away than they will close up. They got, it's kind of like looking through binos at 10 feet away versus 400 yards, you know, it's, it's, if you, they're looking at you 400 yards away, they're seeing you crystal clear, but if they're looking at you 10 feet away, all they could see is movement. So that's why you got to keep, make sure you keep your uh, pass through light on your blinds down and to a minimum. And if you could do that, then you shouldn't have much to worry about. Well, it's day two here at Table Mountain Outfitters. Yesterday was a long, hot day in the ground blind. We saw plenty of critters, just didn't see an animal buck that we wanted to take. So um, Keaton moved us to a different spot this morning just because we had all females and babies yesterday. We are set up yesterday. We didn't have a huge view because we had a big hill in front of us today. We have a giant pasture, giant field to look at all day long to be glassing out all day. The water hole here is extremely close. Like, I don't even think the rangefinder's gonna <laughs> work there. Yeah, no, it's too close. We're looking at like 10 yards, 12 yards. The furthest point out there is 18 yards. Obviously, I can shoot further than that. It's just gonna depend on where it's standing and where Ralph can see it when it comes in. Well, I was uh, driving around that pasture a lot that day and saw a lot of really good bucks around, just uh, made sure they knew they had to be patient because the big bucks didn't really like to water at that hole. So we had antelope right away. I mean, we had activity. It was, I mean, it was incredible. And how, where we were set up was, it was a bowl and we could, I, I swear, I think we could see a mile away. So you could see antelope coming all over and you don't want to keep peeking out of those blinds you don't want to keep adding light in and out but we would slowly just crack it open and I'd look I'd grab my binos and I'd be looking out one eye you know trying to see oh, oh there's some there oh there's a buck and there's a buck and we spot this we spot this one buck and he's coming in so this one buck starts coming in he's got a doe and a fawn and another little buck with him but they all skirted the water hole pretty wide it looked like they really wanted to come in and drink but for whatever reason they just weren't comfortable. And during this time, this buck, he went and he bedded down at about 88 yards. And we're like, okay, well, he's gonna get thirsty. He's laying there. We'll just give him time. He's gonna come in and take care of business. And we're figuring, well, well you know, just, just gonna sit here and, and wait it out. And I look in the back again and I spot another buck and this one's bigger. And I'm like, oh, Vic, there's, I, I, think, I think he might be working his way. Well, as we're trying to keep an eye on him, trying to watch the one that's bedded down, we start to realize th this buck's committing to the water. This big buck is committing to the water, but he's going to come in back of us. So I know, I'm like, Vicky, do you think you can lower that, that left window on the blind? 
if you can lower it because if he goes to the tank, you're not gonna have a shot with that window being like that. Well, lo and behold, as we're paying attention to him and we're, we're like so pumped, a doe sneaks in with, with a little fawn. They come in and we're, um, we're like, oh, this will, this will make him commit now. She goes right into the pond, starts drinking. He works his way around the tank, in back of the pond, comes up, comes right in. Vicky's at full draw with her Hoyt Eclipse and she's holding on him and he's, he's like slightly facing her and then all of a sudden he turns broadside. I'm on the camera, she's on her Hoyt and I know what's gonna happen next. Ralph looking out, that, out the back window again, he goes, Vic, oh dang. He goes, there is a big buck coming in. Sure enough, this beautiful big antelope buck comes walking in. He's on the left side. Before he gets to this point, Ralph says, Vicky, pull the blind window down. It's gonna get bright, but we're gonna need it. I'm not comfortable taking a shot on him the way he's walking around and milling around and it's 50 yards and it's windy outside. And I'm like, you know what? We're just gonna wait and see what happens. And I'm so thankful that I did because as he's doing that at 50 yards out that left window and the, it's so bright in the blind right now, we have a doe come walking up on the right side and she goes to the back side of that water hole at 20 yards and starts drinking. And that's all it took for that good goat to come walking around that back side of that water hole. He, I watched him walk right behind her. She's drinking water. As he goes behind her backside, I drew my bow back. It's so bright. We're like real nervous about they're gonna see us. He didn't even hesitate. He walks behind her. He's kind of quartering to me just a hair, and then all of a sudden he goes broadside. That was the end of it. Second day of Table Mountain Outfitters here in Wyoming, honey antelope. Um, Ralph and I, we got out here and Keenan put us out this one. He's like, you guys probably won't see as many people there, but you're gonna see some antelope. Just be patient. We saw a bunch of does and fawns this morning. It got a little slow again. So we're sitting here waiting and Ralph goes and peeks back out the window again. And sure enough, he's like, Vicky, there's another, there's another buck coming. Be ready. So Ralph told me, oh, just wait, because he's going to come around the door, which obviously, because it's a guy thing, they want he's the girls. He's going to chase They the girl. want the girls. And he come around the back side of that door right there, and finally I'm like, okay, and I just smoked him. Oh, man. Stud. He's a stud. So, thank you. So let's go get him. Come on. And I have my tags right in my pocket, so you guys can't yell at me. I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, this is, is this is my largest goat, my largest antelope. And we've hunted antelope quite a bit with you guys. And this is just, and the whole case scenario, the whole thing, how it all went down was just crazy. Oh, he's definitely one of the biggest goats I've seen dead this year. I mean, he's got- Probably In the last couple of years. He's got mass, he's got tall cutters, he's got big hooks. I mean, he just, oh, he I mean, one of the things you guys say is cutters over the ears, right? Yeah. Well He's well above his ear right there. I mean, that's just, you guys, every year we come out here. RJ shot his goat this morning, his antelope this morning. I just got mine. Ralph's up next. And every year, you guys just know how to do it, don't you? We got it figured out pretty good around here. Yeah, you do. Your, your goat right there, he's got, he carries his mass all the way throughout it. It's, yeah. it's great. He's got the ivory tips, which you don't see very often, less than, than, except in the bigger goats, you get those. Well, he is, um, He's amazing. He's beautiful, and I think Ralph's just going to have to have him shoulder mounted for me. What do you oh, think? Okay. Or a pedestal mount. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yes, because actually wall <laughs> space runs fast. There yes. All right, well, guess what? It's Ralph's turn. He's up next. He's probably not real happy with me because you know what? I'm going to stay back in camp, hang out with the girls, Angie and Judy, for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs>
RJ and Vicky now both have tagged out on some nice pronghorns. But did the crew save the best for last? <laughs> I guess only time will tell. Well, RJ, RJ filled out this morning. Vicky filled out this morning. Now it's my turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm always the one that, you know, just waits till the end and tries to make sure everyone else gets taken care of. And uh, it's so hard to be humble. <laughs> yes, I did tag out this morning. RJ tagged out this morning and now it's his turn. Has nothing to do with anyone waiting for everyone else to be tagged out to make sure everyone wants okay. So hard to be humble. <laughs> Except he forgot his cooler. Well, Eddie and I get all the gear. He get in the truck, we head out. We go to this windmill blind, which is unbelievable, but here's the problem. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the windmill going choo 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 choo. I'm hearing water come out and uh, next thing I know, I'm like. And, and I mean, I, I was out. That noise just, it relaxed me. The wind was blowing. It was just from a, a crazy morning like we had, you know, RJ and Vicky both scoring. I was like, I, I think I zoned out. So uh, I had a guy at the same water hole as Rouse uh, the day before, and he didn't make the best shot, but we bedded it down and picked it up the next morning. And I saw some more bucks in there, so I knew that there was gonna be some water that afternoon. So uh, when uh, Vicky killed hers early, I was, we figured we might as well give Ralph a shot that afternoon to go get one in. The next thing I remember is Eddie going, Ralph, animal. And I wake up and, I, I, and I'm admit it, I'm telling you, I, I woke up, I hurry up, I grab my binos and I'm looking and I'm like, wow, it's a good buck. And he's coming up from in front of us, he circles, he comes around, he gets, he goes out where we can't see him, he comes back in. I ranged to where, you know, the spots I was looking at, I was 23 yards, he came in, he bent down, he's drinking. I drew my venom back and, well, I spitfired him. I watched that Easton four millimeter axis go right through, stick in the ground. We watched him run up the ridge, turn, back up, go forward, back up, and go down. Well, unbelievable day. When I say that, RJ shot his buck early this morning by like eight o'clock in the morning. By 11.30, Vicky shot hers. And I think it's by five o'clock, I shot mine here at Table Mountain with Scott and Angie. And I gotta tell you something, I don't know if that'll ever happen again, but to, for us to do that as a family, the way I'll put it, you put the Cianciarillos and the Denny's together, yep, carnage. Things are gonna die. Whew. What a beauty. Look at him, he hooks good, good cutters, just to the ears. The Cianciarulos tagged out in one day with the Denny's. <laughs> hey buddy, thank you. Yeah, that's a good buck, man. Yeah, huh? I looked at him, I said, oh yeah. And he came in, he's beautiful. When my dad finally gets back to camp with his before five o'clock even that night, he also has a great goat, but uh, I think uh, one or two people might have beat him this year. We're going home with a heck of a freezer, make some more wall space, because I don't know where we're gonna put them, <laughs> but I do know where they're going in the freezer. Thanks, buddy. We've been coming here for a long time. The hunting gets better, the, the camaraderie gets better, Everything that you could imagine about a great hunt, a great adventure, is here. It's a family-run operation. Uh, most of the guides have been here forever. I mean, so it's just, it's an honor and a pleasure to call them, and, and a privilege, to call them friends and to share our hunting adventures now as a family together. Thanks, guys. Now, 
That's what it's How about. cool is that, right? I mean, seriously. Everybody just done quick. Tagged out. So everyone there, Table Mountain Outfitters, Scott, Angie, Keenan, all of you guys, thank you so much for having us back out there. Scott and Judy, we're happy to have some serious Oh, some man, that was you guys. fun. That Absolutely. was fun, you know, that Whopper Tribe. And all of you, thank you guys for watching this week's episode of Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.